Hello, everyone. I'm Nipun Agarwal, and today I'll be talking about the MySQL database service, Heatwave, and Autopilot. MySQL is the most popular open source database in the world, and enterprises across the world use it for a variety of applications. Last year at Oracle, we announced the availability of MySQL database service on the Oracle Cloud. MySQL database service is a managed version of the MySQL database, and it does all the things you would expect a managed database to do. One of the things which is very unique to the MySQL database service in Oracle Cloud is that it is 100% developed, managed, and supported by the MySQL team, which is the same development team which has developed the MySQL database. The other thing which is very unique to the MySQL database service in the Oracle Cloud is that MySQL is offered pretty much in most of the public clouds. However, the cost of the MySQL database service in Oracle Cloud is a fraction of the cost of the managed MySQL service in other clouds. For example, looking at this chart, you can see that the cost of the MySQL database service in Oracle Cloud is about one third of the cost of the MySQL database service in Amazon or um, in Microsoft Azure. Enterprises across the world use MySQL for a variety of applications, a variety of mission critical applications. However, since the MySQL database has been designed and optimized for transactional processing, most of the applications which have been built using MySQL are for transactional processing. So when enterprises need to run analytics on data which is stored in a MySQL database, Enterprises often need to extract this data out of the MySQL database and import it to a database which has been optimized or designed for analytics. And in that setup, customers end up with two different databases, MySQL for transaction processing and a different database for analytics. There are a number of different problems uh, associated in moving the data from one database to another database and also to manage and maintain two different databases. In order to address this problem, last year we announced the availability of Heatwave, which is a query accelerator for the MySQL database service. So there is now a built in native query accelerator for the MySQL database, such that for all applications, whether they are analytic applications or transaction processing applications, there is now a single MySQL database which can very efficiently handle all classes of applications. There is no need to move the data across two different databases. And one of the most important things is that all existing tools and applications which are compatible with MySQL continue to work as is with MySQL HeatWave without the need for any change. The way we have done the integration of HeatWave with the MySQL database service is to enhance the MySQL database and hence the optimizer module of the MySQL database so that when an application sends a query to the MySQL database, the optimizer intercepts the query and makes a cost-based decision whether the query should be done in the MySQL database or it should be offloaded to the Heatwave engine. There are two important things to note over here. The first thing is the applications always interact only with the MySQL database both for sending the queries as well as receiving the results. The fact that there is a heat wave query accelerator present is something which the application doesn't even need to know. Secondly, the decision of executing the query in the MySQL database or in heat wave is a cost-based decision which is transparently made by the MySQL query optimizer. So the big benefit is that all existing tools and applications which work with MySQL continue to work as is seamlessly with Heatwave, except that for many of the queries, the performance is significantly improved. There are three main design points in MySQL Heatwave, which result in Heatwave providing very good performance and at a very low cost. The first thing is that Heatwave has been designed for massive scale. We have invented and implemented new algorithms for distributed query processing. Secondly, we have 
optimize the heat wave stack, the heat wave software stack for the OCI cloud. As a result, we are able to provide very good performance at a very low cost because, for instance, we are optimizing for the least expensive compute chips available in Oracle Cloud. We are optimizing for the least expensive storage in the Oracle Cloud. We are optimizing heat wave for the specific network characteristics. So as a result, we get very good performance at a very low cost. And finally, we have pervasive use of machine learning, both in the MySQL database as well as HeatWave. And this is something which was, which is, which was introduced last month uh, by the name MySQL Autopilot. And we'll be talking more about that uh, later in this presentation. HeatWave has a massively parallel architecture which is aided by a massively partitioned architecture. So there are three phases to this. The first thing is when data is read from the MySQL database into the memory of the heat wave engine, the data is partitioned based on the workload, meaning that looking at the queries, the system makes a determination as to what are the most appropriate columns on which the data should be partitioned in memory such that the amount of data movement across the various nodes of the heat wave cluster is minimized. The second aspect is that the size of the partition is such that it fits in the cache of the underlying machine so that we are able to access the partition at a very low latency. And finally, we have designed distributed query processing algorithms so that these partitions can be consumed by the query processing pipeline in a very efficient manner. And this is also done by optimizing or leveraging the underlying instruction set of the machines on which HeatWave is running. The result of a lot of these innovations around scalability and distributed query processing is that we have a system, we have a service which provides very good scale for end-to-end -end queries. So what this graph over here is showing is the end-to-end -end scale factor for end-to-end uh, -end queries like TPCH or TPCDS. As you can see, across 60 servers with about 32 terabytes of data, heat wave scales with a scale factor of about 0.9 when the perfect scalability is 1.0. In addition to providing good scalability for queries, heat wave has also been designed for uh, very good scalab uh, scalability for data management. The first time when data is loaded from the MySQL database into the HeatWave cluster, the system makes a copy of the in-memory representation of data in the object store. Subsequently, whenever the data needs to be reloaded into the memory of the HeatWave cluster, the data can be read from the object store in parallel by all the nodes of the cluster. Secondly, since the data has been stored in the object store in the in-memory representation, this data can be loaded from the object store directly into the memory of the heat wave node without requiring any transformations. The result is we are able to load data from the object store at near network bandwidth and in parallel across all the nodes. As a result, we are able to provide very good scale that if the amount of time it takes to load, say, four nodes of a heat wave cluster or 40 nodes of a heat wave cluster is the same because the time is the same time as it would take to load one node of a heat wave cluster. So as a result of this, you see that we have very good scalability for data management. While heat wave has been optimized to run on the cloud, heat wave is supported in a hybrid deployment. And this is something which is very unique to the MySQL database service in the Oracle Cloud. Many customers of uh, the MySQL database service uh, choose to keep some of their data on uh, in a primary instance, like on premise in a primary instance. So by using standard MySQL replication, customers can now replicate the data from on premise into the cloud and run the analytics bit of it in the cloud. And once they're done, they can suspend the analytics piece and resume uh, their operations on premise. 
And this is using standard MySQL replication techniques. This is not using any proprietary tools. MySQL database service is unique in offering this hybrid deployment. No other MySQL based service offers this capability. One of the things I like to talk about today is the MySQL autopilot, which was recently introduced. As a cloud provider, as a service provider, we believe that there's a lot more opportunity for automation in the cloud. The reason is we have a lot more information. We have a lot more data when applications are running in the cloud. So for instance, we know what are the specific, we know the, exactly the characteristics of the hardware on which the service is being run. So for instance, what are the compute chips? What are the network characteristics? What are the storage characteristics? We know exactly the version of the software, right? From the database version to the operating system version down to the firmware layer. We know the configuration parameters which have been set um, for that uh, application. And we are able to collect a lot of the real-time metrics. For instance, the amount of data which is flowing over the network, the amount of data which is being accessed by the memory and such. Since we have so much of information and so much of data, we believe that we can do a very good job in automating a cloud-based service. The approach which we have taken for automation is to offer machine learning based automation. The advantage of machine learning based automation is that it provides a custom fit. It provides a, the, the model, the automation is specific to a given instance. And secondly, over time, the system learns from the queries which are being executed in the application and the system gets more intelligent over time. In addition to uh, being able to make recommendations of the various configuration parameters, the system is also able to predict what kind of an improvement uh, the user can expect if they were to adhere to these recommendations. And I'm going to give some examples of this in a subsequent slide. We have enhanced both the MySQL database as well as HeatWave to collect new kinds of data. So if you want to have a machine learning based um, approach, there are two things which are important. We need to have good data and we need to have good machine learning models. So the first thing is that we are collecting new kinds of data in addition to um, um, like data statistics. We are also collecting statistics about the queries. What is the pre-execution time? What is the compilation time or the execution time? Secondly, we have built machine learning models to characterize various aspects of the service. So for instance, a machine learning a model which models the query performance, a model to characterize the behavior of the network, a machine learning model for the dictionary size. In addition to collecting um, new kinds of data and creating these machine learning models, these have been augmented by a bunch of innovation which we have done at Oracle. For instance, we have novel techniques to do adaptive sampling. We have invented techniques at Oracle to do a statistics extrapolation for the various kinds of statistics we are collecting. Use the machine learning models we create, use Oracle AutoML so that we are able to get very accurate models in a very short amount of time. So by using all of these uh, various innovative techniques, we are offering nine features in MySQL Autopilot. These features span the entire gamut of the service lifecycle from auto provisioning during system setup to a number of features during data load. And then we have features during query execution and then the automation features for failure handling. The features, the autopilot features during the system setup and data load, these are exposed via an advisor, meaning that the system makes a recommendation and then the user can decide to either accept that recommendation or to override that recommendation. The features during the query execution and failure handling, these are automated and always turned on by default. So the system um, makes a recommendation and enforces the recommendation, and there is no way for the user to override these recommendations. I'll next talk about some of these features in more detail. The first step 
um, whenever you have um, uh, the, the whenever you want to like provision a system is to determine how many nodes of a cluster are required to run a given workload. If you take any service out there, whether it's Redshift or whether it's um, Snowflake, the onus is on the application or the user to determine what cluster size, what shape is going to give you the optimal price performance. With MySQL HeatWave, we now have an advisor with the only input that is required by that advisor is to specify the tables on which you want to run analytics. Based on the tables which are specified, the system then does a very intelligent sampling of a very small percentage of the data, um, always less than 0.1% of the data, and is able to predict with a very high degree of accuracy the amount of memory that will be required to process the data in these tables. Based on this projection of the amount of memory required, the system is then able to recommend what is the size of the cluster that is needed. For a variety of experiments we ran, both on customer workloads as well as standard benchmarks, we found that we're able to achieve north of 95% accuracy by sampling less than 0.1% of the data. So the prediction is very accurate and it is very efficient. And this completely obviates the need of guesswork from a user or an application. Once the data uh, has been loaded into the MySQL database and you have a cluster provision, the next task is to load the data from the MySQL database into the memory of the heat wave cluster. Now, the way the data is distributed um, on a cluster is very important in uh, the performance of the system because you want to uh, partition the data in such a manner that it minimizes data movement across the nodes. With the auto data placement feature of MySQL Autopilot, the system looks at the queries which are being executed. And based on the queries, the system makes a prediction of which columns should be used as the partitioning key, such that the data movement is minimized. Not only does the system make a recommendation of which columns should be used in partitioning the data, but it also makes a prediction as to what improvement would the application see if this recommendation is followed. So in this example over here, um, in the column highlighted in green, the system makes a recommendation that, okay, if you follow uh, the recommendation of MySQL Autopilot and partition the data in memory using the columns, there's gonna be so much of an improvement. No other database service has this capability where the system is able to make a prediction of which columns should be used for partitioning in memory and what is the expected improvement by following that recommendation. Once the data has been loaded in an optimal manner uh, into the memory of the heat wave cluster, the next step is the query execution. One of the features, one of the MySQL autopilot features we have introduced during the query execution is the auto query plan improvement. As the application runs queries on the system, the system learns from these queries which are being executed. And based on the cardinality of both the base relation as well as the intermediate relations, the system is able to make prediction of new queries which it might have never seen before to do a better job in terms of estimating the cardinality and therefore improving the execution plan it comes up with. So in this diagram shown over here, uh, the system uh, looks at the query A, B, uh, system looks at the query shown on the left-hand side, which has three columns, A, B, C, and um, is able to very accurately know the cardinality and the various statistics after that query has been executed, including the intermediate results. Now in the future, it sees a different query shown on the right-hand side, which has a subset of this query but it has two new constructs like a new um, column D as well as a new operator union. The system is able to learn from the previous query and do a fairly good job in terms of predicting what will be the optimal query plan for this new query. Just by this feature alone, we saw a 40% improvement in the performance of both TPCH and TPCDS benchmark on a 25 terabyte workload. 
Okay, so we have talked about a bunch of technology, both on the heat wave side as to how we have innovations in MySQL heat wave to make the system very performant and very cost effective, optimizing it for the cloud. And uh, some features on MySQL autopilot, how the system is intelligent and improving the performance of the queries as uh, the system evolves over time. Now let's see what is the end result of all this technology. So I'm gonna start off with uh, benchmarks uh, with um, standard like benchmarks and comparing with some uh, services out there. So the first comparison we have is with Amazon Aurora and we are taking the TPCH queries on a four terabyte workload. The first observation we have is that it takes a long time to index the data in Aurora, right? So once you have loaded the four terabyte data set, the next step is to create indexes with Aurora. The interesting thing is with MySQL heat wave, there is no need to create any indexes. So there's a whole bunch of time lost right there with Aurora, where after loading this uh, data, you have to create the indexes with MySQL heat wave, no need to create the indexes. Even after spending the time to create all the appropriate indexes in tuning the system very um, to the best of our ability, we find that on an average for four terabytes, a TPCH query takes two and a half hours with Aurora. In, with MySQL heat wave, the same query takes on an average 6.3 seconds. So 2.5 hours with Aurora, 6.3 seconds with heat wave, that's about a 1400 times improvement in performance with heat wave. The next thing is the cost. Not only is MySQL heat wave 1400 times faster than Aurora, it is half the cost of Aurora. So if you look at the price performance advantage of a workload like this compared to Aurora, Heatwave offers 2,800 times better price performance. Now, if you are a user who wants the best performance for your complex and liquidities, chances are you're not gonna like use Aurora, you're gonna move the data from Aurora to Redshift. So you end up with two different databases, Aurora for transactional processing, Redshift for analytics. It's not an ideal situation to be in because it requires ETL and it creates complexity for the application. But let's assume you're a user who really wants the best performance uh, for your complex and queries, and you decide to have two different databases. With MySQL heat wave, you only have one database for both transaction processing as well as analytics. Now comparing the performance of a single database, which is MySQL heat wave for both transaction processing and analytics, and comparing with Redshift, which has been optimized only for analytics, we find that heat wave is about seven times faster at half the cost, right? So here you have a general purpose database, MySQL heat wave, comparing with a specialized database, Redshift for analytics. Heat wave is seven times faster, half the cost. So it offers about 13 times better price performance compared to Redshift Aqua. And this is the latest version of Redshift. Now let's try another database, which is designed only for analytics, Snowflake we find the price performance advantage of heat wave gets even larger. Heat wave is about 6.8 times faster than Snowflake at one fifth the cost. And this is on 10 terabytes uh, TPCH workload. So, the perf so as we saw, starting with Aurora, heat wave is 1400 times faster, but that's a general purpose database. And you would expect that, okay, Aurora is not optimized for analytics. But then even when we compare with analytics services, heat wave is, much faster, much cheaper. And then um, we did a 30 terabyte comparison for uh, the TPCH workload across multiple databases, Snowflake, Redshift, Synapse, BigQuery. Across all the database services we measured, we found that Heatwave is the fastest service and also the least expensive one. The graph on the right-hand side shows the price performance advantage of Heatwave for TPCH queries on 30 terabytes. So it's 44 times, uh, Heatwave offers 44 times better price performance compared to Snowflake, 16 times better price performance compared to Redshift, 15 times better compared to Synapse, and 37 times better price performance compared to Google BigQuery. And this is 30 terabytes TPCH. Now, one thing I got to tell you about all these results, which I'm showing that all the Heatwave scripts for these TPCH queries these are loaded on, and these are available on GitHub 
So we encourage any one of you to go and try and validate these results for yourself. And the specific steps which you need to do in order to reproduce these results are available on our website, oracle.com slash heatwave. Now, a large percentage of MySQL customers um, also use Aurora, and they have applications which are predominantly OLTP, but they have some complex queries, some long running queries, and we call these mixed workloads. So we wanted to see the performance of MySQL heatwave for these mixed workloads, which is like you know, a very, very common set of like applications which MySQL customers run. Even on a very small database, like 100 gig database, which is your you know, bread and butter database for MySQL customers, we find that Heatwave is 18 times faster than Aurora and 40% of the cost. So in terms of price performance, even on a much smaller database, even on mixed workloads, Heatwave offers 42 times better price performance compared to Aurora. So these were the benchmark results. Now let's see what customers have to say. So we are showing over here that compared to Aurora, it's Heatwave is faster and cheaper. And this is exactly what we have seen with customers who are migrating their production workloads from Aurora and are now going production with Heatwave. Red3i recently moved about six terabytes of data uh, from Aurora to the MySQL database service. And with Heatwave, they found that they didn't have to change their application. Many of the queries improved by a thousand times, aggregate their workload improved by 85%, and the cost savings they got from migrating from Aurora to Heatwave was 60%. Tetris, another um, uh, enterprise which moved out from Aurora to Heatwave, and they had a very similar experience. They found that many of the queries, uh, the, the, the performance improved from minutes down to milliseconds. The migration was seamless, and the cost dropped to less than half. Fan communication. Again, very similar experience. When they tried Heatwave, a customer of Aurora, when they tried Heatwave, they found they didn't have to make any changes to their application. The aggregate performance improvement was 10 times and major reduction in the cost with Heatwave. Another customer, Tamara, very similar experience. The cost reduced by three times. Many of the queries accelerated. And one of the observations they made is that since Heatwave is so much faster, then Aurora, they're able to enhance or enrich their application by having more complex queries, which can now run or uh, execute in a reasonable time uh, with Heatwave, which they were not able to do in the past. So to summarize with MySQL and Autopilot, MySQL database service in Oracle Cloud becomes the only MySQL based service with efficient processing for mixed workloads, analytics and transaction processing. MySQL Heatwave offers the best performance at the best price compared to all the other analytic services we have benchmarked against. Snowflake, Redshift, Google BigQuery, Azure Synapse. All the scripts uh, for reproducing these numbers are available on GitHub, and we encourage any one of you to try this. Even for mixed workloads with much smaller data sizes, MySQL Heatwave offers very good price performance advantage over Aurora. The scripts for this are also available on GitHub. MySQL Heatwave is the only MySQL based service which provides machine learning based automation via MySQL Autopilot. My da MySQL database service in Oracle Cloud supports hybrid deployment where customers can they have an instance running on premise and they can replicate the data in the cloud using standard MySQL replication. And finally, this is the only MySQL service which has been developed, managed, and is maintained by the same development team which does the development of the MySQL database. For more details, I would invite you to uh, join us at the hands-on lab. It's session number 22, or you can go to oracle.com slash heatwave where you can find a lot more information, including demos, collateral, feedback from customers, in including many more details about the performance results I just shared with you. Thank you very much for your time.